Let's learn about the miracle that makes statistics possible. If I know the mean and standard deviation, probabilities are extremely easy to calculate for normal distributions. For example, 68% of observations are within one standard deviation of the mean and 95% are within two standard deviations, and 99.7% are within three standard deviations. And we can compute the probability of being between any values easily with software or a z-table. And let's see this in action. So let's let x, our random variable, be the height of a random person. And suppose that the average height is 66 inches. We write mu of x is 66 inches, and the standard deviation is four inches. We write sigma x is four inches. So what is the probability of being between 62 and 70 inches tall? Well, each of those numbers is four inches from the mean or one standard deviation from the mean. So that probability is 68%. Now let's consider a more complicated random variable, x bar, the average height of 16 random people. Well, x bar is also a random variable. Every time I take a sample of 16 people, I will get a new value of x bar. What is the mean of x bar? What is the average average height of 16 random people? Well, mu of x bar is the same as mu of x. I expect that group of 16 people to on average have a height of 66 inches. But what is the standard deviation of x bar? Well, since x bar is the average of 16 people, we are not as likely to see extreme heights. It would be very weird to see 16 random people whose average height was six feet three. The standard deviation is smaller. The standard deviation of x bar is the standard deviation of x divided by the square root of the sample size n. So here we have the standard deviation of x bar being 4 over the square root of 16, or 1. And since x is normally distributed, x bar is also normally distributed. That's just a nice little fact about normal distributions. So what's the probability of the group of 16 having an average height between 65 and 67 inches tall? Well, each of those numbers is one standard deviation away from the mean. So that probability is 68%. The rules for finding the mean and standard deviation of x are very easy, which makes it very easy to find probabilities if the distribution is normal. Okay, now on to the central limit theorem. Let's move on to a different random variable, the income of a random person. Suppose the average income is $50,000 and the standard deviation is $10,000. What is the probability of an individual making between forty and sixty thousand dollars? You might be tempted to say sixty-eight percent, but the distribution of income is not normal. It's skewed to the right, and we have no way of answering this question without some more information. But let's take a look at x bar. Let's let x bar be the average income of one hundred random people. The mean of x bar is still fifty thousand dollars. When I take a hundred random people. I expect their average income to be $50,000. But again, the standard deviation is less. Because there's more people, there's less variation in their average income. The standard deviation of x bar is 10,000 over the square root of n, which is 100. So the standard deviation is $1,000. And now get ready for the central limit theorem. Even though x was not normally distributed, x bar is normally distributed. As long as n is large, say at least 30 is a common rule of thumb. So what's the probability the average income of 100 people is between 49 and $51,000? Well, that probability, because those are one standard deviation away from the mean, is 68%. This is pretty crazy. Even though the distribution of income was not normally distributed, and we didn't know anything except the mean and the standard deviation, I can very accurately calculate probabilities related to x bar. This is the magic of the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem states that when n is large, the distribution of sums or averages of random variables is normally distributed, regardless of the distribution of the original random variable. Let's do one more quick example. Let's let x be the number of heads in 100 coin flips. Now, x is not normally distributed at all. In fact, it's a discrete random variable that follows a binomial distribution with sample size 100 and probability of success 0.5. But we can view x as the sum of 100 individual coin flips whose outcome is either 0, tails, or 1, heads. In little more mathematical terms, we could say that x is the sum 
of the yi, where yi is 1 if the ith flip is heads. The y's here are called Bernoulli random variables. And because x is a sum of a large number of Bernoulli random variables, it is approximately normally distributed. And the average number of heads we'll see is, of course, 50. And the standard deviation is well known. It's the square root of n times p times 1 minus p, which is just 5. So the average is 50. The standard deviation is 5. And what is the probability of getting between 45 and 55 heads? Well, those are each one standard deviation away from the mean. So it's about 68%. Calculating this exact probability with binomial distributions would involve heavy use of the calculator. But here, we were able to do this just in our heads. Rules for computing the mean and standard deviation of sums or averages of independent random variables are very easy. And if I know the mean and the standard deviation, and I know the distribution is normal, then I can compute any probability easily. And the central limit theorem tells us that sums and averages of large numbers of independent random variables are normal, which makes their probabilities easy to compute, which is the basis of a large portion of the field of statistics. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.